Hey, what's up? It's Valar. Hope everybody's doing awesome. Thank you so much for being here, checking out the video. I know I'm a little bit late on this. Uh, well, like a day or two, but who really cares? Uh, the other thing is I haven't been doing that much content recently, and it's just because I have other priorities in life right now. Number one is actually going to the gym and working out and trying to get myself in shape, which I've been doing hardcore. It takes a long time to actually get going, but that's been my number one priority right now. I got a 20-month-old and I got a job. So unfortunately, as this is being a hobby, sometimes I don't get enough time to actually, or I just don't have enough energy to actually record anything later at night. Anyways, the I'd like to try more, but it's really just an issue of not having enough time right now. That's basically it. So subscribe to the channel, make this my full-time job. Why don't you just actually like, you know, pour on on here, get all your friends to subscribe, get your mother to subscribe, your brother to subscribe, your priest to subscribe. Uh, the local whatever, you know, the, the local Biden chapter, the local Trump chapter, get them all to subscribe to the channel because they need more Valar in their lives. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to go over this uh, fusion here and give my thoughts on it. It is, and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to hold back here. It is a fucking huge shit on all the players, the way Polarian did this by putting all new heroes in here. And that's what you have to do for the fusion. I swear there's never been one, actually. I could be wrong. I know there's been some shady stuff before where they had Towering Titan or somebody at the end of a... I don't remember who it was. In the Foley fusion, someone was way at the end and they dropped it. They didn't tell you what you needed to get there. They gave you like five days to just grind levels without... Or you had to pay a ton of money, right? So this is actually... I do think this is sort of a trap. I'm going to go for him because I'm just kind of like have no other goal in the game right now besides maybe Faction Wars. And he actually, I think, might help me in Faction Wars for Lizard Men. So that's my goal for him. But if I don't get him, I really don't care. So it's not like I'm, I'm not going to kill myself going for it. And so gem, gems, I get a handful. Well, it's not a handful. It's actually a good amount of gems. Like being a content creator, you get like 540 gems. I'm the lower end of the content creator uh partner program but we do get 540 gems a week so that helps out a lot we have an advantage which is sort of unfair but we do get an advantage over people from creating content we get chickens gems all that stuff so anyway once a week so anyways i really really don't like how this is going and actually i sort of had a bad taste in my mouth with raid recently again and I know I went for a period of time where I took a month off, actually. And that was also timing, and I was getting into working out and all that. So that was about, like, almost three months ago now. It's like two and a half months ago. So anyways, the thing now, though, is I sort of started feeling like, and this was right before they announced it, like, last week after I did one of these Dolphin videos, one of my most recent videos, started feeling like, like, I don't really, yeah, Faction Wars is cool, and I... I Go for it. You can get Lydia if you finish it, but who cares? That's sort of how I feel. I can do all the level 20, Ultra Nightmare. I two key it, whatever. And then I can just use key on Nightmare and Brutal and get a get get some extra chests there. So it's like, okay, Doom Tower's not here yet. I don't anticipate we're gonna have it until February 2021. They say it's coming this year, but I've been around long enough to know that's full shit bullshit. Maybe they have intentions of that, and it's just not gonna happen. February 2021. That's when I say it's going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. But anyway, I've just been like, man, sort of this creeping feeling of Raid is just boring again to me, actually. That's the creeping feeling I got. Like, most of it's, I, I, I'm saying this, like, I could just sit here and pump everybody up and be like, yeah, Raid's the best thing since sliced bread because, you know, my name is WW Whale, whatever the hell. And I've spent thirty, forty thousand dollars on this game, so I have to make content on this game, and I have to make you think this is the best game since sliced bread, and I have to be inauthentic and just shove it down your throat that you're a dumbass, and that you know if you don't play the way I do, you know I'm better than you. No, 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 that's not my style, right? So my style is I'm gonna come at you real. This is shit. The game is for the most part shit right now. <laughs> so when Cyberpunk 2077 comes out, I may just exclusively go to that game. And it's only about a month away. I may just play Raid casually. And I'm going to admit right now, I haven't even talked about the Fusion. So this is more of a rant session anyway. So, But the uh, I'm going to admit right now that I'm just going to play casually for the most part. And I don't have the time to do my Dolphin account. 
I thought doing a dolphin series would be really cool, but grinding two accounts, this, this fuse has actually made me realize this takes so much time. And if I'm going to play one account, I honestly want it to be the one that I've actually invested in. And, and if I only have a limited amount of time, then I can't really do it justice on the dolphin series. So with that, I'm going to give the dolphin account away, but it's gotta be when we get to 3000 subscribers. So I don't even know where the hell we're at or wherever we are, the 25, 2600, I, I could be wrong, 2400, whatever. 3000 subscribers. I will give the dolphin account away for free. I'll just do a random draw once we hit 3000 subs and there's a skull crusher on there. There's a Shiramani on there. There's kale, there's frozen Banshee, there's grave kill chiller. Grave chill killer. Grave kill chiller. Uh, all right. Anyway, I've just been rambling on and on right now. So that will come. This video is just about this guy, this uh, Vergum car, which I actually do kind of like his skin. I think it's cool. You know, he looks like a mount, like if several people have already said. Uh, but I think he's cool in a way. Uh, maybe he's got this tank of uh, whatever. He's got two beer kegs on his side there. Yeah. And a little, uh, little horn. <laughs> Anyways, 35% chance to stun, which you can book up to, what, 45%? That's pretty bad. The chance increases by 15% for each buff on the target. Whatever. Eh. It's not bad. It's not really that good. The removing provoke is cool. It does increase defense for two turns on allies who have debuffs removed. And also shield buff on allies equal to 20% of his max HP for two turns. Book to a three-turn cooldown. And then you get the multiplier on the shield if you book it out. So I do think, I don't know in Faction Wars how many of the mobs do provokes. But I do think this is actually a pretty good ability. It's kind of cool for Faction Wars. That's obviously his best ability. This thing, at AoE, removes one random buff. 75% chance of removing two random buffs. Places block heal for three turns on enemies who have one or more buffs removed. Decreased defense for two turns on enemies who have two buffs removed. Okay. On a three turn cooldown. It's not bad. He's not going to do any damage. He's immune to provoke. So he's he's pretty much a niche arena faction wars type character. Maybe you can find a dungeon or two to use him in, but he's not going to be that useful because he's really mainly good against mobs and faction wars and PvP provokers like Krisk and things like that. Now the epics in here, they actually look pretty solid. Like three of the four, at least the void, the void epic is like oh, okay. The, the rares are just complete good dog shit trash, and I, I don't, I'm just whatever. So <laughs> the uh, Fane here, Fane looks cool, and if you look at Fane, this model, this yeah, she's a mouse. But the funny thing is, this model they use for orcs, they use for a whole bunch of people. That body model below her head has been used so many times in this game, it's absurd. So the mouse part's cool, but they reskin the shit out of everything. So, okay. Um, and I think Kizzle's full of shit, actually. Not because of Kizzle. I got nothing against the guy. Whatever. I don't even know him at all. So, and he doesn't know who the hell I am either. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying, though, is, and this didn't make sense to me either. Kizzle was reading all these reports and doing all this stuff. And I, I'm just putting it out there, right? Okay, they, they could build a new faction quite easily if they wanted to. All they had to do is put a faction in there. And they've released enough champions just now to have a big, big ass faction. So who gives a shit if we don't have a new faction? We got flooded with new champions. What the hell's the difference, right? So the uh, and then the other thing too is here's the thing about the CEO. That CEO could have had something already written where he's planning to retire anyway. Not everybody gives a shit about making as much money as they possibly can for the entire rest of their life all the time. Once you have enough money, if you're smart, you go do something else, and maybe you pursue other things too, right? Maybe he had a contract that expired and he didn't want to renew it anyway and that was known to happen. And apparently it's the CFO who's the new CF CEO, right? Do you think the CFO did not have a say in how things used to be previously? Do you really think that? I guarantee you the CFO was actually shoving these things down people's throats more. So we're going to get more of the same shit, higher pack prices. We get $60 prices on gear and all that crap now. I don't buy the gear anyway, but it's 60 bucks now. And I'm just ranting my ass off because I'm super pissed off at how this company treats people. 
and I think it's stupid. And I'm flat out actually not going to spend money on it anymore. I'm done spending any money. So Dolphin is not spending money. This account is not spending money. If I can't get the Fusion because of that, I don't care. So it, it, it's fine. You know what? No big deal. It's just playing for fun, play casual. But the thing that I think was completely missed and was just hyping to get views and everything, which is fine. Why the fuck would they change anything if it's making them that much money and actually like taking it off that far? Yes, they want to scale it. But what does that mean? They want to actually do things more to make more money. Why? Because they know we're fucking addicts. That's why. Think for yourself. The only way to get out of this shit is realize they do this crap to target your freaking brain. They know what they're doing. I guarantee you they actually have like psychologists and shit that make all these colors that trigger your brain to spend money. I 100% guarantee it. Anyway, that's a, <laughs> wow, I really got off on a tangent there. So you, 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 all right, whatever. So anyway, she's cool. She got the turn meter steal here. Poison and decreased attack, which is sick. Three hitter that does decreased defense and weaken. So the fun thing is I actually feel like I do want to actually build some of these to showcase them for fun if I can get them. Two hitter, turn meter fill, does decrease turn meter too. Another two hitter, but places a shield based off the damage. And I like this guy's skills because he's based off of HP. Now his HP is not that high, but his skills are all based off of HP. So if you can stack the HP on him, hopefully he does a decent amount of damage. And this shield will be pretty damn cool. And then it does a heal as well. So if he does a decent amount of damage, this ability right here is probably the ability I'm most excited about besides Fane with Clan Boss in any part here, because this is actually really cool. Three turn cooldown, but you could get a huge shield out of it, plus a huge heal, which would be really, really cool. And I could see this guy actually helping a lot of people with content. And then he does a two hitter, first chance to do a decrease attack, and then removes increase attack. Second hit, chance to do a decrease defense. So he does decrease attack and decrease defense. Single target, but that's all right. Well, yeah, single target. And then, uh, also could remove increased defense. So pretty cool. I like this guy. This is actually a pretty cool champion. This guy is pretty damn cool too, Caden. So Caden actually got one hitter, a provoke on his A1. That's pretty mad actually, just single target provoke. Eh, nothing spectacular. But an AOE decreased attack and then revives two random allies with 50% HP and increased defense on him for one turn off, three, two, four turn cooldown. Believe it or not, I want this guy so I can do level 21. Dark Elf Faction Wars to help me through that so you can have some support with him. And he's based off of defense. He's a little bit slow. And like, am I looking at the wrong... Like, I, th I don't think it's showing his whole stats, actually. Let me see. Because if you go through there, I feel like those are freaking low. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. I was going to say, like, the, the, but God, the HP on the other guy must be pretty good then, too. So his defense is actually pretty good. 1376. He's based off defense. And then the other guy, the... Uh, the hell was that guy's name? Shit. All uh, right, let's see. Uh, this guy, blood soaked, blood soaked barbarian. Uh, I, man, I'm all over the place today. All right, and I'm not editing this. I really don't care. Okay, let's see. Blood soaked. That doesn't mean I don't care about you. That means I'm just having fun. Get over it if you care. All right, let's see. Here we go. Uh, where did it? Twenty thousand HP. So that leads me. This guy's even cooler, actually. So. Provided what his multipliers are, I'm actually really excited about this guy, Barath the Blood Soaked. And um, last one, we'll just go through it in the index, actually. It's this Orc guy, Tuhak the Wanderer. Two hitter, 30% chance of increase in cooldown. That's actually kind of cool. Increase cooldown of all the target skills on one turn instead of the champion has less than 50%. Not bad. All right, decrease speed AOE, increase speed on him, heals by 15% of the damage inflicted if they have less than 50%. He feels a little bit niche too. Steals turn meter, does a stun, steals 100% if he has less than 50% HP, decreases the damage taken by his team over 20% when their HP drops below 60. The only problem is he has no defense, he has okay HP, he's an attack based champion. So I don't know if his survivability is going to be that good. Because I feel like some of that, I don't know, I could be wrong. 
but I feel like he's not going to be – he's gonna just going to be okay. I, I'm, I'm not that excited about this guy, and I could be wrong there. But the other guy, Tuhak – how many these fucking names? Baroth the Blood Soap. That guy is actually – all right, kind of cool. So I'm going to leave it at that because I've been on just complete ramble fest right now. I'm going to try to do some new content, but i got to admit right now, I'm not that excited about Raid Shadow Legends. So I'm just being honest. I am going to do the account giveaway at 3,000 subs on the Dolphin account because I just plain old don't have time for it. So please do me a favor, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for checking out the video. I will be back soon with another video. Cheers.